praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you are already here, Father, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for every, every sermon we hear in this church, Father God. We are just going by your pathway, Father. Along, along, along we go, Father. You said there was a divine um, shift, and then, Father, you said this, the, the um, glory is here, Father. We're, we're, we're believing, Father God. We are in believing. We are in expectation. And Father God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for being so good to us, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for great pastors, Father. And everybody in this church, Father, I thank you for, Father. Lord, I pray today or tonight, Father God, that you speak through me, Father God, what you want to say and help me to leave off what you don't want me to say, Father. I pray that the Holy Spirit just teaches, Father God, through me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, open their hearts, ears, and minds, Father, and to listen, Father God for your next step in their life. Hallelujah. Again, Father, we do praise you and we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teaching on growing up spiritually part three. And I just, I hope it's funny if I will be. But there will be part four, five, six, and seven if y'all don't start growing up. <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I obviously needed this. Hello. Okay. This is about receiving the knowledge. Okay. Ephesians 4.13 says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man. Okay, remember that until and remember son of God, remember knowledge. Okay, how is that going to come about? God starts us in a spiritual, in the spiritual, just like He starts folks in the natural. Okay, remember the baby stage and then the and the little bit in between stage and then the mature stage. Okay, uh, of a natural person, and He says He talks about the um uh, that this. The sincere milk of the word will cause us to grow. Cause us to grow. Okay. First Peter 2 2. First Peter 2 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now remember the word desire. Okay. Be hungry. I didn't say you had to feel hungry. I said be hungry. Because God wants you to be hungry. And we really do desire to please him. Be hungry for the knowledge of God. Don't stay on milk. People who only use milk will be unskillful, the word says, unskillful in the word of righteousness. And there's a lot of people out there that need to get born again, and we need to be skillful in what we say to them. You know, not beat them over the head with the Bible, but be skillful, be tender. Not tender to the devil, ever, but be tender to them unsaved people. They need Christ. That's the only, that's the only trouble with them, really, truly, is they need Christ. In fact, if they knew Christ, they would think, oh my gosh, I wish I had had him before. And it's true. All these mean terrorists and everything, they just don't know the love. They don't know the love of God. If they did, they wouldn't be that way. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The milk of the word means knowing the first principles of the doctrine of Christ. Getting born again, but going, but they got born again, but they didn't go any further. Okay. Hebrews 4.13, New Living Translation says, a person who is living on milk isn't far along in the Christian life and doesn't know much about doing what is right. This is a New Living Translation, okay. Solid food is for those who are mature, who have trained themselves to recognize the difference between right and wrong, and then do what is right. Okay, Ephesians 4.13 says, speaks about growing up in the knowledge of the Son of God, 
until we all come to the unity of faith. Receiving the knowledge, feeding, 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 feeding on the word. Until you gain a knowledge of who you are in Christ. Until you gain knowledge of what he did for you in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Until you gain a knowledge of what he is doing for you right now. Seated at the right hand of the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession, and that is Hebrews 7.25. I keep losing that scripture. I love that scripture. He ever is sitting there making intercession for you, even though you don't think nobody's praying for you. Jesus Christ is praying for you. Yes. Yes. And, then, and then until you gain a knowledge of your standing before the throne of God, until you gain a knowledge of the fact that he defeated Satan and his demons, and that all the forces of the rulers of darkness are dethroned, all the forces of the rulers of darkness are dethroned, uh -huh. and they can't rule over you. Now, the natural man, they can, but not over you. Amen. Amen. When you gain this knowledge, you are getting beyond the milk of the word, is what I was trying to get at. You're getting beyond the milk of the word. And now, remember, it's growing up spiritually. Why haven't some grown? They're on the wrong diet. The right diet is hearing the word, speaking the word, reading the word, praying the word, being a doer of the word. Amen. Fellowshipping with your father and fellowshipping with believers. The word is spiritual food and you will grow. The anointing is on the word. I just, I just love to quote the word because the anointing, as somebody said to me, it's in my head somewhere. I haven't forget, but anyway, it's in my head. I, like, by his stripes you are heal, healed. The anointing rides piggyback on that scripture. That's why I like to say the scriptures. I'm a scripture quoter. Oh, my husband can attest to that. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't be able to have it. In John 6, 63, the words that I speak, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. His words are zoe, that's God. The life of God are in his word. His powerful word goes into your spirit and you will grow. It's growing, yes. it's, mm, mm, it's growing, it's growing. Feed on it, feed on it, feed on it. Okay. Uh, a testimony. That's what I did from 1980 to 1990. I, I feed, 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 eat, eat, eat. See if I can, sometimes I look at this and I really know what I'm trying to say. Okay. Feed, 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 eat. I, I just, all the time I was reading. When my husband, my ex-husband was at work, I was, I was feeding, I was feeding, I was feeding. Because our marriage was in turmoil and I had to keep my sanity. Amen, amen. Sorry, but I was I'm new into the uh, I was new into the um, 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 Pentecostal. I've come out of a Methodist church into the, and you know I just I heard feed feed feed. That's what I was doing, and it kept my sanity. Okay. Amen. Oh, uh, listen. I hope nobody knows here, and I won't name no names. I'm not naming names, but um, my ex-husband was a policeman, and um, he got an opportunity to be a detective. Well, he went into he went into the detectives. They had an office, all of them offices, you know. But seriously, I'm getting to a scripture. He came into an office where the detectives, I hate to say, were um, having affairs all over town, and they were married. So see, that was that was whoredom, is what it is. It was whoredom. He moved right in that. Now, now he obviously didn't have strength enough to go against that, you know. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. But what I'm trying to get at is evil companions corrupt good morals. That's right. Amen. And Amplified says, 1 Corinthians 15.33, evil companionships corrupt good manners, good morals, and good character. Amen. It corrupts it. And our marriage fell apart, y'all. It just fell apart. Paul talks about the natural man the carnal man, and the spiritual man in the scriptures. 
The natural man is one who has never been born again. The carnal fleshly, carnal fleshly man has been born again, but he has not developed or grown. His conduct, his conduct, it's my dentures, I'm sorry. His conduct <laughs> is like that of a natural man still. <laughs> He is governed by his physical senses and what he feels like doing, what he don't feel like doing, okay? Then there is the spiritual man. He has developed in divine things. His spirit has gained the ascendancy over his intellectual and physical processes. God governs him through the word. Okay, that's three. I'm just going to go over That's three of them. I'm going to go to each of them. Okay. Okay, the natural man. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I can testify that probably anybody that you witness to, they, you know, they, they can, some of them just can't get it. They can't get it. You know? Well, they can't get it. Okay? Okay. In John 8, 40. Jesus said, you are seeking to kill me. That's what he said. You are seeking to kill me. Verse 44 says, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. The natural man is ruled by Satan. The natural, unborn again man is in the kingdom of darkness. That natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit of God. It is a realm he knows nothing about. Now, I don't know, I just thought this little analogy I had here, and if, and if you can't get it, that's okay. It's going to be real fast, okay? Um, <laughs> sonar, okay? Sonar, the, the men in the church told me was um, what they use um, to locate things in water, okay? Radar is surface locating and tracking, okay? Now, um, just a minute. Okay, just a minute, just a minute. It's a realm, okay, this natural man, it's a realm he knows nothing about, okay. Well, sonar can't really work on land is what I'm trying to, this natural man cannot understand the spiritual thing. Sonar does not work on land, it works in water. Bottom line, okay. Radar works on the surface. They just, you know, like, they just don't have it, y'all, until, until, until you explain to them, you explain to them what's going on, hallelujah. Okay, Romans 8, 7 says, because the carnal mind, just one moment, okay, so, okay, just one moment here. That, okay, someone once said, what you're not up on, you'll be down on. Now that's the truth. Um, people who don't know God and don't want to know God, they will be down on you. They will be down on Christians. I tell you, we're living through it right now in this nation. What you're not up on, you'll be down on. Okay. Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind, the mind of the flesh, is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. That is the unregenerative man or the, called the natural man. What he does, what he don't understand, he will be down on. Okay. Ephesians 2, 2. You used to live just like the rest of us. He's talking about us. He's talking about us. You used to live just like the rest of the world, full of sin, obeying Satan, the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2, 3. That at that time you were without Christ, having no hope, without God in this world, and that's just where the natural man is. That's why we have to reach him. That's why we come to church to receive, to go out to give. We got to have some skill to know how to speak Amen. to people. People. Okay. That's the heart of God. He wants to get everybody in. Let's get out of here, you know? Okay. Okay, that was all of us before we got saved. And that is a picture of everybody who is not now saved. Ruled by Satan. But thank God there is a way. There is a way to God. Jesus says, I am the way. 
the truth, and the life. He is the way. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Next is the carnal man. Remember, this man is born again. He is not a newborn. He is not a newborn, though. It means a person governed by their physical senses. Physical senses. If I don't feel like doing it, I don't do it. If I feel like doing it, I do it. See, they feel like it. Or um, what they see, um, yeah, I like that, you know. I mean, they haven't come to the point where, um, well, forget it, okay. Though he is born again, he walks after the order of the natural man. He's born again, but he walks after the order of the natural man. He is body ruled. This outward man is dominating the inward man. You know we have an inward person. It's our spirit man. This person gets angry enough to fight, and then they fight. Like Pastor was saying, they just they go ahead and punch out, you know. Um, instead of using self-control like the word says to do, this carnal man acts just like a worldly man would. I'm just saying that. So for instance, acts just like the worldly man does. But you know, it does take time for that carnal man. It, but some of them don't want to grow. I'm getting ahead of myself, but some of them don't want to grow, you know. Maybe they still like to fight. Maybe they still like to cuss, drink and everything, you know, like that. But they are born again. Now, amplify. 1 Corinthians 3, 3. For you are still unspiritual, carnal, having the nature of the flesh, under the control of the ordinary impulses, for as, for as long as there are envying, envying and jealousy and wrangling and factions among you, are you not unspiritual and of the flesh, behaving yourselves after a man, after a human standard and like mere unchanged men, he said to the Corinthians. Oh, they were a wild bunch. Um, <laughs> they were. Okay. Um, strife is a manifested presence of demons. That's why God doesn't want us in that area. He wants us in peace. Don't get into strife. It is a manifestation of demons. I like demons hanging around with me. James 3.16, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, confusion, rebellion, and every evil thing. Uh, I was going to say something, but I, I may not know what I'm saying, so okay. Backbiting, bitterness, jealousy are all the signs of underdevelopment on the part of a carnal believer. But you don't have to stay that way either, praise God. Make a decision, make a quality decision. And you know it starts with your mouth. I've been doing this. I'm hungry, Lord. I'm hungry. You don't feel hungry. You remember you're born again. Start with your Father, I want to walk in love. I want to walk in, in your word. Make a call, Father. I start right now by saying, I'm hungry. I don't feel hungry. I don't want to read the word. Father, I'm hungry. It starts by a quality decision to stop being a carnal person, okay? Be hungry. Be diligent. Read the word. If you're not getting nothing out of it, just keep reading it. You will. Perhaps the fleshly man, the carnal man, assumes it is sufficient enough merely to be saved. Or he has no spiritual appetite. Or they are unwilling to pay the price for advancement, which is studying, reading, listening, coming to church. You need an eagerness for the truth to mature, an obedient heart which is willing to yield to the Holy Ghost. Characteristics of the spiritual man. The spiritual man is one who knows what belongs to him in Christ and takes advantage of it. The spiritual man has drunk deeply at the fountain. He has fed regularly at the table of the Lord. Amen. And the spiritual man has saturated himself in love, the love of God. This man has come to know 
the Father. Through the word, he has come to know the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The spiritual man is one who is governed by the word. In every circumstances, he says, what does the word say about this situation? The word has gained ascendancy over his mind and over his body. The word has brought the spiritual man into harmony with the will of God. For the word of God is the will of God. 1 Corinthians 2.15 the spiritual man tries, examines, investigates all things, Amen. and discerns all things. Amen. Proverbs 10, 13 says in the New King James, wisdom is found on the lips of a man who has understanding. He's been studying. Wisdom. Wisdom will come. The N New American Standard Version says, on the lips of the discerning wisdom is found. 1014 Proverbs says, wise men, the spiritual man, stores up knowledge. Remember love. 1 John 314, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's the word of God. Love is the ultimate issue behind all things. God is love. It has to be the ultimate issue for the spiritual man. It is the ultimate issue behind all things. Praise God forever. I love, I just love the Bible. I love the Bible. Just, I mean, a lot, a lot of times I'll go back and say, Lord, I don't understand. I'm not kidding. I turn the page. I just, I mean, it's okay. And I was thinking the other day, um, I, I, I know you've all thought about this, but, you know, I'll ponder things. I was talking about grace this morning. Get the CD. It was so good. I know he has grace on me. I have the rottenest study habits for this right here. Let the dog out, let the dog in. Pass through the kitchen while I'm letting the dog back in. Put something on my mouth, go back and study. Let the dog out, let the dog in, go back. Pass through the kitchen. Sometimes I can really make myself not pass through the kitchen, put something on my mouth. Go back and study for an hour, you know. But I mean, but you know what? I'm telling you the grace of God. He knew, before he called me to teach, he knew what was a bad study had. It's like, what? I really am trying to use self-control, you know. The dog, I can't do nothing about. <laughs> but he, he knows everything you think. He knows everything you do. He knows every habit. He still loves you. And that grace that Pastor talks about, that grace, I wrote it down. It's his God's karaoke machine that makes everything just work out. And, I, and when I get up here, I'm thinking to myself, gee, I wish I wasn't here. Gee, I wish somebody else was up here. I do. It's grace. It is absolute grace. Yes. I just wanted to say that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I praise you and I thank you. Father, I praise you and I thank you. If anybody needs prayer for anything, I will be in agreement with them if they wish to come up to the altar this moment. Praise God forever. Let's pray. You can still come up even in my prayer if you have to. Father, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> Lord, again, all I can say out of my mouth is thank you, God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and your peace and your compassion, Father. Your tender mercies are over all your works. Father, you know every heart here. Oh, God, make us strong and mature, Father. 
because there is a lost and dying world. And Father, we know it. You know it. We know it, Lord. Help us, God. This coming week, Father, help us be sensitive. Be sensitive, Father, to our family, which we're probably all going to get together, to our family, Father, and, and just people in general, Father, sensitive. Love, Father, love. Love is patient and love is kind. Love does not seek their own way. You taught us, Father. Would you, Father, just give us grace to walk in that love this week, Lord? And I mean that. And I thank you, because I believe you will, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.